Welcome to Framework Fortune Crypto. I'm your host, Ben. If you had joined me earlier, I was trying to do this live stream, but we were having technical difficulties. I decided it was better just to go ahead and record it than deal with the technical difficulties at the moment because it wouldn't make any sense to put a pre-weekend meta-analysis out on the weekend, right? So we're getting it out this way instead. I apologize to both of you guys on Twitch and YouTube, but let's go ahead and jump into it. So a lot has transpired over this past week with the meta. There was some updates, some buffs, some nerfs to some cards, but we're seeing several different things develop now like uh, nature decks having some sneaky sneaky things going on with them as well as a magic deck that i want to address first off now i do feel like a hypocrite <laughs> calling this deck out because uh you know i feel like i was one of the first to really point out the insanity of the aether snap combos that you can do in magic and then dralimar came out in the corset refresher and Alistrina Prime Refractor just came out in the Judgment set. So these two together with the Aether Snap in one turn at six mana, they can spam through their entire deck. These decks that I'm talking about have nothing but low mana spells that draw cards and do damage. And then just the Aether Snap, Alistrina, and Dralimar. Once Dralimar drops, there is nothing you can do to stop it if Alistrina is dropped first. Because of this in Power 3, do the same for your deck where you reduce the mana cost in your hand by 1. So all those 1 mana damage spells and draw sp spells will cost 0, which will then refresh your mana with Dralimar. Even if you don't have the Aether Snap in your hand, you will eventually draw into it that same turn and get the Aether Bugs out there and still kill your opponent because they were, you literally will play your entire deck in that one turn against your opponent. And there's nothing your opponent can do about it. I think it's too overpowered. They did say in the last update that Alastrana was high watch they're keeping a very close eye on it way before when it was revealed i said this was way too powerful and thought that it was going to get nerfed they probably are going to nerf this in some way i believe the idea was that power three would mean you'd have to play it at eight mana but there is enough cards that reduce the cost of mana of cards in your hand in magic to get this off by five mana and and get Dralimar out by six mana and not only that magic has tons of mana ramping with all the unlocking mana so it's, it's not that difficult for them to get this combo off i played against the the type of deck four times and lost all four times on the six mana turn same exact way and just no way to stop it so I have a feeling that's going to get nerfed. So another deck I want to bring some attention to. This is Deception with the Ludian Thespian. So it gives three strength to another one of your creatures on Roar for four mana. But it's an Echo and it has Tempt Fate. I'm going to say they're either going to nerf this probably to plus two strength. Or maybe take Tempt Fate off. I don't know for sure. But it echoes a one mana creature uh, that has the same roar. That's why this card is skyrocketing since it's came out. You know, it came on the market at 43 cents. Has not looked back. This is down a little bit today. It looks like in Ethereum at dollar 57. But all the markets are real wild across everything. But I had someone beat me with one shadow of lebanon so if you don't know what the shadow of lebanon is so one mana it's this crazy looking cat here and this card has always been a high price card just because it is so good for one mana but at the end of your turn the creature gains hidden and at the start of your turn it deals one damage to the opposing god so the way it continues to hide itself it's very hard to kill because there's not a lot of cards 
that can hit a hidden creature. So if they can keep that on the board pretty easily, they can then buff with the Ludian Thespian. And the deck that beat me within like four turns, four mana, used the Ludian Thespian along with Dark Knives to buff this cat up to 16, I think, was the final strength of it. Of course, I took the damage over the <laughs> over those couple of turns that got me down to that I think it was 13, but it 16 was plenty enough to kill me. And I lost that game at four mana. That was how fast it was. So that's something to be aware of. It's probably not going to be very prevalent. Uh, maybe in the lower ranks because there could be a lot of people testing some of these new deception cards from Mortal Judgment like the Ludian Thespian with some of the older cards. And then Nature, out of Mortal Judgment, a few things to be aware of if you see them coming at you. So this wolf can get out of control. That's why it's as high as price as it is. Only 31 for sale and 843 exists. So you know it's a good card. Nobody wants to come off of it. But one that you got to watch out because there's a lot of healing, including the one Nature God Power that can heal a creature one every turn. So there's a lot of ways to buff this. I haven't had any problems against it. You just kill it early before it gets out of control. If you got plenty of board wipe, shouldn't be a problem. The Silk Spite, they did nerf. And I don't know if I like the nerf yet or not. I think they're going to end up rebuffing this card. Because before it was really strong. But for the low health and low attack of the Silk Spite... Uh, I don't know if it was that strong. It's pretty easy to kill this thing. So maybe they'll give it a health buff or something. Because that 3 health puts it in range of a lot of spells. Still though, I have a feeling we are going to see some weird nasty decks come out of the Silk Spy and the Noxious Arachne. Because those 1-1 one, one, uh, right here, these guys is what it spawns. And they're automatically deadly. And then Amazon is on fire right now. Amazon decks can be a nightmare. You got the Warrior Paradise with Blitz who's got buffs. The United Reinforcements, which we're seeing a hybrid population aggro deck of Amazon Wild. Because of United Reinforcements being able to buff both your Amazon and Wild creatures at the same time. And then you're going to see, if you haven't already seen, a ton of these injured sprouts paired with the marsh walkers. Probably in almost every nature deck you're going to run across. Uh, they can get out of hand if they start buffing these guys. Oh, another nerf. They nerfed this albino hydra, which I'm not sure why they did. It was doing 6 damage to uh, your opponent's god. And now it's just the strongest enemy creature. But for 7 mana, I mean, it's only a 6-6. Six, six. It is wild, so it can get buffed. I don't know. We'll see. It is going up in price, but there is a common, and there's a lot of them. I got two of them just because I love the artwork, and they're so cheap. Now, the Nemesis Wasp is basically a three-mana boar, the underbrush boar with Temp Fate. So you may see Nemesis Wasps and underbrush boars that are attacking outside of combat. That can be problematic. Then the Bark Sworn Hunter, it might be the best Amazon out. And it could get nerfed possibly because it is very strong. But it has Echo, so it's going to bring out a smaller Amazon that has a similar roar effect. It's just going to be a weaker version. But it gives 2 plus strength to this creature and then attacks an enemy random character. You don't have any creatures on your board and the Bark Sworn Hunter gets played. You're going to get smacked right in the face with this thing at 4 attack right out the gate. And then they're going to play the Echo version of it and do the same thing. So this card, anytime it comes out of their hand, you it's random. But it can ruin your game plan and they can buff this card. Every wild population deck is running the Howler here. Obvious add-in because if you control two or more other wild creatures, you give them all one strength. It's very easy to have four or five wild creatures on the board. That's a one mana buff to all of them. You see it started spiking here towards the weekend as we're getting closer. 
So that kind of gives me a signal we're going to probably see a lot of nature decks. And that's that's what I've been seeing the most of and actually having the biggest problems with is these population nature decks, either wild Amazon or Amazon wild hybrid. I would still be very weary of the silk spike because I think somebody will come up with something very strong with that. So let's hop into goo decks here and take a look at some of the data and see what we're going to see the most of more than likely so looking at the tier list by popularity heirloom death seems to be the most popular which is what i'm playing well, it's very strong and there's a lot of different variations that can be made with it so that's a interesting swing that now death is looking to be one of the more popular meta plays so you might run into a lot of this which if you do I, i'm sorry <laughs> agro light 11 percent and then there's the agro nature right there 10 percent so the light decks are still rampant i've just not having had any problems with them but the vexing vicar did get nerfed it's no longer has front line so it doesn't cause big as a headache as it used to like did get plenty of mortal judgment cards that are good and i think light will stay strong in the meta for now and you're going to run into it but light's been the meta since the core set refresher dropped so i think most people are kind of getting used to playing against it at this point so let's check the top decks here and the top win rate not surprised by that heirloom death this is the deck that i played last weekend and you can see i've played over 50 games with it and i'm averaging about a 68 percent win rate which is lower than this high win rate but he's played a little bit less than me and his is probably better than mine i don't know <laughs> you're definitely going to see heirloom death it is very strong but the main key to stopping it from being so overwhelming is just keep the priestess of takat off the board that is literally all you have to do i know there's other anubians that can still health and stuff like that and that can get a little overwhelming but really the strongest part of it is the priestess and her doing two damage to your opponent's god every single time an anubian dies so that's just the key to the deck i'll go ahead and spoil it so a lot of people in mythic have started to figure it out that's why my deck i feel like has become less effective which is why i've been testing different variations still very strong because of how fast it is but it's not that hard to stop these are the main anubian pieces of it are so low mana cost most spells and board wipe cards in the game can take out these weak little creatures and usually there's enough to take them out multiple times they can be brought back quite a bit i know as i said i've been beat by nature decks mainly and had problems with some deception decks and then here you can see the dralimar combo this is what i was talking about 83 percent win rate out of 37 matches i didn't play h pain so i'm gonna look and see what his deck looks like yeah it looks like the same and it's, it's just a bunch of drawing very few creatures main idea is just to get alistrain out then dralimar and just throw everything and this is a lot harder to stop than the Anubian Rush. Like It is very hard. Once, once six mana hits and that Dralimar drops, it, it's pretty much game over. Whereas Heirloom Death, if six mana hits and Land of the Dead comes out, the game could be over. But if you somehow got Priestess attack at, across your side of the board and it dies and goes into your void or maybe they haven't drawn it yet it becomes way less effective and maybe we see some type of little nerf to the nubian cards that does bring the deck down a little weaker because death does have a lot of different things it can do and that's what i've been experimenting is mixing the anubians with other little arch types like the amazon wild hybrid so We'll be seeing some of that in this weekend ranked on my side. Little hybrid decks of heirloom death. And we do have four of these death decks up here. So 
it is probably going to be a lot of the meta. Now we got control nature. Let's see if this is one of the ones that I've seen. This is mainly wild with that bark sworn hunter in there because it's so good. But a lot of board wipe, which makes sense and probably is not a bad choice. A type of nature control deck like this that can populate and control the board with a lot of cards like Pyre Shell Beetle where it gives creatures burn one, canopy barrages, uh, the underbrush bores, the war's way is going to summon two of those little sprouts we were talking about, Dagon he can get out of control and in the game, lightning strikes, staff roots, the bark swarm, wildfire, pack succession, the hunt so just plenty and then the Hevner Grimshuck which is a beast <laughs> plenty of board wipe and that's what I would say is going to help you the most against Anubia this weekend and nature has quite a bit of healing a light deck there like I said the Vexing Vicar did get nerfed doesn't have that front line but they're still pretty strong decks you know you always got to watch out for the Imperium Pacifist and then, let's see if this one has the new... No, I don't see him running the new relic. Instead, he's running two of the Mace of Calling. This roadside checkpoint's a very strong card, too, to watch out for. And does have Thester, CERN, Prayer of the Desperate, Asterisk. Prayer of the Desperate is a card that can end the game really quick, early game. If the light gets a bunch of creatures out and they play Prayer of the Desperate, you might lose that turn. Same with Asterisk. They did nerf Zealous March, which is going to have some effect on the strength of Light Decks, but let's be honest, it's only one card, and it still summons four 2-2 Protected Acolytes. Besides that, there's plenty of strong 7-mana creatures and spells in Light that you could replace this with pretty easily. I would think and here's the aggro deception deck that I was talking about got the two shadow of Lebanon's in there dark knives that's buffing let's see shadow backstabber that's stealing strength and giving to your strongest enemy creature you've got the assassin's aim which is buffing plus three Merrick which can do some shenanigans with his own buffing Arms Dealer adding some buffing. The Ludia Thespian, of course, with crazy buffing. And that's pretty much all it is, is just trying to rush the board and get one creature buffed very fast to a big attack and try to end you by four or five mana. That type of rush deck is going to be out there lurking, but probably not as prevalent. We're not seeing a whole lot of war, but I would not discount war. War decks are still dangerous, and they have got new cards, and I believe a lot of the hype of uh, Anubian and Death and the crazy Dralimar combos and the very aggro forward light decks now that was kind of what war was before, I believe we're going to see something come out of these war decks that's going to be pretty strong here soon. There's been one or two war decks that I've played against in Mythic that was mainly focused on buffing one creature or two creatures and one relic and the rest of the deck was board control. And it was pretty strong. They can end you pretty quickly. So those war relic decks I think is where the arch type is going to go for war meta. But a lot of people haven't really got it figured out yet. So, of course, with some of these buffs and nerfs, it's made prices go all over the place. There are a few neutral cards that if you see pop up in a deck to be aware of. Kai of the Conduit of the Gods. This is one I've been playing. It can end the game out of nowhere, late game, if your opponent doesn't have any creatures on the board. Because all the damage is going to go directly to the god. Garial Bolster of Souls. This ability to double the strength and health of a friendly creature, if you can keep Garial out, can get out of control extremely fast. The Pools of Nemesis actually got a buff, and it's up to 4 health now. It only has the ability to summon a copy of a creature, and that's on every turn except the first turn that you play it. 
But there's going to be shenanigans with this. Any deck that's willing to run this is going to have shenanigans. Dolvaz, this is a nether, but can be played in any deck. The main problem with it is if it stays on the field too long, it's going to buff itself and double its strength and health every start of your turn. So the first turn is not bad. It's just going to buff to a 2-2, but then it's going to go to a 4-4. Then an 8-8 eight, eight, and a 16-16, 32-32, so on and so on. So this you have to get off the board. You cannot leave it on there. The spawn of Calorine or whatever you say, this crazy big old alligator looking thing or squid or whatever it is. It's a very strong card, only 4 mana having twin strike with 4 attack and 7 health. It does do damage to itself after it attacks, but it has a, it is a structure so in any deck that can heal this thing uh, and that can buff it, it can get out of hand. Lootable Corpse is going to be in a lot of the Anubian Rush decks. Just a nice little one man that buffs. It's dropped quite a bit since it came out, but I think we'll see it turn around in prices. This is a very strong card. There's a little secret sauce with Brink Watcher that I'm experimenting with, so I'm not going to say too much on that until after the weekend ranked. You guys will probably see that come out uh, on my side at some time. The Encumbered Looter, I think, was not getting played very much, but this card is super strong. It doesn't matter what you're playing. For two mana, getting a hidden creature that does two damage with that afterlife of draw a card, you're getting a lot, a lot of value here. Any time of the game, this is a good card to draw, no matter what kind of deck you're using. But especially in this fast meta, uh, this thing will help you keep up with keep up with the pace. Of course, the inflator uh, it can buff things quite a bit, but you're probably not going to see that too much. I've seen it a little bit, and other than that, I don't see too much else to really mention that could be a problem. There is another death card that I want to point out from Mortal Judgment that I've seen played a little bit. But this card is really, really strong. In my testing, it has put in work multiple times. And that is the Lucky Devil. And he doesn't look like much because he's 5 mana with a 2-4. But the back line with all the different Anubian and Zombie spawning, it's easy to keep the Lucky Devil alive. He has a Tempt Fate, which can give him some more buffs. But the biggest thing is that once per turn, destroy an enemy creature after it attacks. If you can keep the Lucky Devil on the field, your opponent has to be very careful about which creatures they attack with um, and how they're strategizing because the Lucky Devil is going to throw a wrench in that. This card has dropped in price. And I have no idea why, because I love it. I might buy some up at this cheap price, because this is an epic. Come join us Saturday for the Weekend Rank live stream, and watch me take on all these mythic players with my death decks, and let's see who's got the better death decks. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Till next time. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be. Living in a time where disease.